The BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. These people played their role in the 2021 Abu Dhabi fix. Andrew Benson, the BBC's chief F1 writer, is corrupt. Uh, I have evidenced that on numerous occasions he continues to be corrupt. He has never once exposed the truth regarding Abu Dhabi, continues to just peddle the narrative. I'm going to demonstrate to you in this video that this is ongoing. Um, the question needs to be asked, are they corrupt? Are they incompetent or are they indeed racist? F1 on BBC Radio 5 Sports Extra. Hello and welcome to Interlagos. It's round 21 of the World Championship. And I can tell you what, it's hotting up everything and all eyes will be on this grid, which is quite mixed up. Max Verstappen goes for his 17th win of the season, but there are plenty of people who want to challenge him. So Max Verstappen going for his 17th win of the season. This is, of course, insane, uh, insane weather. That's right. Tell us that everything is insane. As you can tell, it's a sprint weekend. We've already had one race, which was won by Max Verstappen. You guessed it, but Lando Norris was there. He was up and he was trying his hardest to win. It wasn't to be, but can he do it today? That's the question. Alongside me is our lead commentator, Harry Benjamin. And we know Max Verstappen will start from pole, but behind him he's got all sorts of people who could challenge him he does indeed Charles Leclerc shares the front row with him also the two Aston Martins right behind they share uh, the second row Lance Stroll ahead of Fernando Alonso perhaps benefiting uh, from the rather bizarre qualifying we had on Friday where the storm clouds came and then then the rain came uh, but Aston Martin have been looking quicker they feels like they've started to understand the upgrades that they brought to uh, that car over the last couple of races so the other reason is they've got nothing to lose neither is they've got nothing to lose so we have been uh, fed this notion that they have nothing to lose it's a it's a formula one buzzword enjoy the ride anything can happen they've got nothing to lose this is how Formula One is sold. They've got nothing to lose. Alice Powell, W Series race winner, is also alongside me. The start is going to be one to watch. It always is. What is this start like? What is? What do you have to do at Interlagos to make it work for you? Well, it's a very, very short run down into, into turn one. And Charles Leclerc has already said building up to this race today here in Interlagos. He said, I'm going to give it everything going down into turn one. Essentially, he's got nothing to lose. Well, neither's Max Verstappen, but... He's got nothing to lose. Enjoy the ride. It's only live once. Parrot the narrative. Now, pay special attention to what Harry Benjamin has to say when he's asked the following question. I mean, we saw so many overtakes down that section with DRS enabled as well. That won't be there for the first couple of laps. But Harry, we're expecting to have a lot of overtakes. You're going to have your work cut out because you always do here in Brazil. But just talk me through how you think this is going to uh, go. Well, I have absolutely no idea, Jenny. This is good. <laughs> <sighs> Harry Benjamin. How do you think the uh, 2023 Sao Paulo Grand Prix is going to go? I have absolutely no idea, Jenny. Really? You've got absolutely no idea. Now, most of us do have a bit of an idea. Because we've uh, been watching Formula One all season. We've been watching Formula One for many, many years. And what have we seen in Formula One for many, many years? Not what we've seen this season. Not 
this level of absolute ridiculous dominance. But Harry here has got absolutely no idea what could happen. Anything could happen. Nothing to lose. It's only live once. But since the uh, Adrian Newey proposed design philosophy of ground effect came into effect in 2022, there were 22 races in the 2022 season. 17 of them were run by, won by Red Bull. 15 of those were won by Max Verstappen. In 2023, up until Brazil, there had been 19 races. 18 were run, won by Red Bull. 16 were won by Verstappen. So in that time period, out of 41 races, 35 of them had been won by Red Bull. 85% of races won by Red Bull. And Max had won 31 of those 41, which is almost 76% of races won by Max Verstappen. And yet, the BBC's Harry Benjamin has absolutely no idea. Talk me through how you think this is going to uh, go. Well, I have absolutely no idea, Jenny. This is good. <laughs> it's, it... This is bullshit. I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen. Anything can happen. Nothing to lose. It's only live once. You're right about the overtakes. Highest uh, number of overtakes on average at this South Palo circuit. And that's what the sprint did give us yesterday. It gave us that entertainment and a glimpse into what we might and hope to have uh, this time around. Weather looks like it's going to stay stable as well. Uh, so no chance of any rain. In fact, the risk of rain is precisely 0%. But the thing we saw... Oh, so, so you do know a few uh, percentages and statistics, uh, Harry. You know a few percentages and statistics, but... You've got absolutely no idea when it comes to what might happen in this race. Or yesterday is that the DRS, I think, so you've got the DRS, the drag reduction system running from turn 15, the, the last sort of left hand kink that brings you onto the main straight down to turn one. Then you get it again on the exit of turn three down to turn four. So obviously those are the two key overtaking spots where some great moves were made, but it's, it's all about making it stick because we saw yesterday Daniel Ricciardo in the Alpha. Right, enough of that crap. We'll go and fast forward to a point where there's some more revealing stuff from the BBC's commentators. OK, let's run you through the grid then. In case you weren't here on Friday, it's Verstappen on pole position. He's alongside Charles Leclerc. Then it's Stroll, Alonso. Superb qualifying performance from the Aston Martins if you take the last two weekends into consideration especially. Superb qualifying performance from the Aston Martins don't really talk about the fact that there was a degree of fortune based on the changing weather conditions in the qualifying session. You're not saying, well, there's an element of fortune within what Stroll's qualifying position was because they, he, he managed to go around the track at the time where in that session it was the optimum time for putting a lap time down. Are you, are you, are you actually trying to tell the people it's based on outright ability and performance or just are you really explaining that it's it was just down to circumstance not really doing that are you jenny gal okay i've skipped past the interview that they've just done with max verstappen and then jenny gal links us in oh be, bearing in mind they'd done the sprint race the day before so that the teams had had that experience and got the benefit of any learning from the sprint race jenny gal goes on to say this that's a good point alice isn't it a lot of people did do their homework yesterday we saw the mercedes slipping back not having the race they wanted but they can alter things with that setup to make it a little bit better even though they're in park fermi rules yeah they can they've got several options that they can can do that's uh, available to them they can uh, let's let's just rewind that about Park Ferme rules and what Alice says. Now, Alice, who, who the is Alice? Let's go and play here. Hey, we saw the Mercedes slipping back, not having the race they wanted, but 
they can alter things with that setup to make it a little bit better, even though they're in Park Ferme rules. They can alter things with that setup, even though they're in Park Ferme rules. Tell us about those Park Ferme rules, Jenny. Tell us. Because under Park Ferme rules, which you're not telling people, uh, there's a list of 20 specific jobs that can be done to the car whilst under Park Ferme conditions. And I think not on the list requires special written, written permission. And these are engines can be started, fuel added or removed, and a fuel breather fitted, and spark plugs can be removed to allow internal engine inspections and cylinder compression checks. Energy storage devices can also be changed or, or sorry, charged or dis discharged. The brake system can be bled. Engine oil can be drained. Compressed gases can be drained or added and other fluids can be drained or replenished as long as the replacement fluid is the same specification as the original. Wheels, fasteners and tyres can be removed, changed or rebalanced and the tyre pressures checked. Heating or cooling devices can be fitted and a jump battery can be connected so the electronics can be accessed via a physical connection. The front wing can be adjusted using existing parts, but no parts can be added, removed or replaced. Bodywork can be removed, cosmetic changes can be made, tape can be added to, and any part of the car can be cleaned. Onboard cameras, marshalling systems and timing transponders can be removed, refitted or checked. Changes can also be made to the mirrors, seat belts and pedals and the drinks bottle can be filled up to a maximum of 1.5 litres. So within that, park firm A conditions, what can be done Jenny Gow? They can make minor adjustments to that front wing and that's it. Anything more than that, what's the consequence? Well, the consequence is you have to start from the pit lane. So you can't make wholesale changes to your car. You're not going to do anything that's going to dramatically change the performance of your car from the day before under Park Ferme conditions. Let's see what Alice has to say. Yeah, they can. They've got several options that they can, can do that's uh, available. What are them several options then, Alice? Several options. I've just talked you through the options. The several options are, well, we can we can change the fluids, we can change the tyres, we can replenish the fluids, we can fill the drinks bottle up to, up to 1.5 litres, we can tweak the front wing. What are the several options? Tell us. Available to them, of course. But yeah, they, they really did struggle yesterday. Of course. They've got several options available to them. Of course. Yeah, yeah, all you listeners, you all know what them options are, don't you? Of course. Yeah, yeah, you all know. I'll just say it, because you know. Do you know, Alice? You've just told us there's several options available to them. What are those options? Of course, they're the options. Thanks for that. Thank you for your valuable insight. But just so uh, you don't think I've cut Alice off too soon, let's listen to what Alice says. But yeah, they, they really did struggle yesterday. I did want to, George Russell set the fastest lap, believe it or not, of the, the sprint race yesterday, but he really came out of the blocks really, really quickly. And I just wonder whether he just get destroyed his tyre doing that because, you know, he's got such a great start and was on the back of Max. We thought, wow, well, here we go. You know, George is, is going to be challenging for the win. But then he just started to drop off, drop off, drop off. And, and so did Lewis Hamilton. And by the end of it, Lewis Hamilton was, was setting lap times that were a lot slower than, than those behind him, sort of all the way down to, to 14th place. So, uh... yeah, how, how bad it is Lewis Hamilton? Um, so you're telling us, of course, they've got several options available to us, to them, to, to, you know, make the car perform better than the day before. And and George Russell got a great start the day before, but did he destroy his tyres in doing so? Thanks for the insight again. What have you told us, sir? You've not told anybody, you've not educated anybody with, well, this is possible. This is what they might do to try and learn from the day before. What have you done there? Nothing. Nothing. Useless information. 
absolute waffly crap. So here we go. They'll they'll be hoping that they've uh, made some changes overnight that can certainly help that. Otherwise, they're in for a very long afternoon. We've had. They've been hoping that they've made some changes overnight. You know, in park ferme conditions, those conditions where you can't really make many changes that are really going to make that much of a difference. But they're going to hope that they've made them changes so that we see something different today. Yeah? So we've witnessed a sprint, sprint race. We've saw who won the sprint race, who was dominant, what happened to the Mercedes. But we're hoping that in conditions where they're not allowed to change hardly anything, that they're going to make them changes overnight so that today... It's going to be all different because you know what? Anything can happen. Anything can happen. They've got nothing to lose. It's only live once. So, again, just for context, um, for those of you that don't follow Formula One, um, it's the British Broadcasting Corporation. Um, we have a British driver. His name is Sir Lewis Hamilton. He has legitimately won the world driver's title on eight occasions one of those occasions the sport itself cheated him out of it he has won a record 103 grand prix well it should be 104 because he was robbed of one uh he's got 104 pole positions a legend of the sport british legend of the sport British Broadcasting Corporation. You'd think that they would be um, maybe mentioning the fact that we've got a legend of the sport. Let's uh, let's have a listen. Lewis Hamilton will start in fifth place alongside Lando Norris. He's had a good weekend so far. Let's hear from him. I just have a few seconds. I was saying I was looking at Lingino bracelet here. Lingino means little little Lando. Oh, so. So part of the interview is advertising a brand, but the interview is of Lando Norris. Lando Norris, let's let's have a look how Lewis and Lando compare. Um, so career points five thousand and thirty three point five uh, to Lewis, five hundred and thirty five to Lando, hundred and three race wins to um, none. Uh, 197 podiums to what's that? 13 uh, pole positions, 104, 1 total GPs, 330 to 102 points per. The, the list can go on and on and on. If you've got a legend of the game, if you've got a legend of the sport, if you've got a Usain Bolt, a Roger Federer. A Rafael Nadal, a Novak Djokovic, a Tom Brady, a Lionel Messi, a Cristiano Ronaldo. The list can go on. If you've got somebody like that, you kind of talk about them a little bit, don't you? You kind of recognise their achievements and the magnitude of their impact on their sport. Not so much the BBC. That's right, Lando. Put on a good show. Um, Jenny, what have you got to tell us, Jenny Gal? So that's Lando Norris speaking to Mariana Becker. I think a lot of people would love Lando to just lunge and get a really good result here, wouldn't they? A lot of people would like to see Lando lunge and get a really good result here. So, talk us through what a lunge achieves in a Formula One race. We'd like to see Lando do a lunge and get a really good result here. Right, so a lunge achieves what? Well, number one, a lunge, you need to talk to people what's acceptable in terms of a valid overtaking manoeuvre or something that's out and out dangerous, which nobody's ever revisited since 2021. So that's for a start. So this notion of a lunge, a lot of these fans don't even understand. But what does a lunge achieve? 
You think that a lunge is going to achieve you a result in a 71 lap race? The race result is achieved over the race duration of, I believe it was 71 races, uh, 71 laps in Brazil. Lando might do a lunge at turn one on lap one. Does that win him the race? Has it shown that throughout the course of this season and last, somebody performing an overtake on that Red Bull car on Max Verstappen, lunging past them at turn one, does that result them in them getting a really good result? Does that win them the race? Answer, no. Why? Because that Red Bull will just breeze by them at some of the stage. So this notion of everybody's hoping that Lando does a lunge and gets a really good result. The fuck are you talking about? It's 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 not going to achieve anything, is it? A lunge and gets a really good result. That Red Bull has not got the ability with a DRS advantage of thirty kilometers an hour to just blitz past him on the next straight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was a shame about the sprint yesterday. I don't think Lando Norris could have done anything, really. Uh, there was talk about, was he a bit cautious? But even if he had had a, a, a blinder of a start, Verstappen also got a brilliant start, and he had... The so, we've got the evidence of the previous day. This, did Lando doing a lunge and get a really good result. We saw what happened the day before. But keep hyping up. What can happen in the main Grand Prix? Because anything can happen. It's all going to be different. He's got nothing to lose. It's only live once. Parrot the narrative. Yeah, just getting news of the tyres as well. It looks like there are some interesting choices with Stappen. Had a new set of softs, but he's chosen to go on to his old set at the moment. Everyone else is on softs, but the ones who have new around him have chosen the new. Yes. So what does that mean? That means that Red Bull are that confident about their pace advantage they don't even need to worry about being on brand new soft tyres because they'll obliterate everybody even on new soft tyres. That's the way it is. That's the way it's been all season. That's what we've seen. And yet, keep hyping it up. Wow, he's got used tyres. This could make it all different, couldn't it? Let's see how it plays out. It could all be different. Anything can happen. It's only live once. They've got nothing to lose. Well, it is time for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Let's hand over to Harry Benjamin. Well, it's a place where comebacks have been raised. Championships won. We love Sao Paulo. It's time for the Sao Paulo Grand Prix. So, uh, Harry, no mention of um, the fact that, you know, the British Broadcasting Corporation in the build-up to the Brazilian Grand Prix doesn't want to mention that a British driver uh, won this Grand Prix in the past, in 2016, 2018, 2021, and won the uh, World Championship there back in 2008. You don't, you don't want to mention that, do you, Harry? No, that's fine. But, you know, being the British broadcasting company, we'll focus on Lando Norris. OK, I've had to stop this video there because... Um, I did this video last night, tried to upload it to YouTube and uh, it's not going to be visible to everybody because they blocked it on issues of copyright. So I'm going to break it down now into three sections. So that was part one. There's going to be two more to follow. Now they are really important because they demonstrate the absolute incompetence of the BBC in what they're saying because they are proposing notions which are not in accordance with the rules of the sport whatsoever, which is absolutely ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And when you drill down to the language that they use and the manner in which they describe Lewis Hamilton and they and contrast that with how they talk about other people, you've got to drill down to begging the question, why? What are those differences? Why do they talk about some drivers in one way and yet Lewis Hamilton in another? So look out for those two videos, extremely important. The BBC are truly disgusting. 